Um, hey everyone, so this warm up is going to be done today, Wednesday, and then <clears throat> we will finish it on Friday in a video form as well. And if you read your student directions page, if you did not turn in the first attempt on ICANN 3 and ICANN 4, <clears throat> excuse me, you may turn this in on Friday as long as it's completely done and you followed the video to get the correct answers. Okay, so I'll be doing a little bit again today, and then I'll do a little bit more on Friday. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Our first two questions that we're going to do are from 1 through 4, and we're solving absolute value equations. I've not walked through these yet, so um, I don't know if it's no solutions or two solutions or things like that. So uh, you might want to have your graphing calculator. Okay, just something to keep in mind makes this a little bit easier and my goal is to isolate the bars so getting started the first thing I'm gonna do on number one is subtract 10 that's gonna leave me with 40 and then to isolate the bars I'm gonna divide by 4 and that's gonna leave me with 10 at this point what I can do is make up my two problems so the stuff in the bars will not change it is the 10 <clears throat> outside of the bars that will change. So it will equal 10 and negative 10. And now we're not done. We haven't solved for x yet. In the first problem, I'm going to uh, divide by negative 5 and get negative 2 as one answer. And then on the other one, I'll divide by negative 5 and get a positive 2 as my answer. All right, um, let's just go to number 2. So number 2, again, I'm going to draw my wall, isolate the bars. To isolate the bars, I have to move the negative 5. I will be dividing by negative 5. All right, so again, dividing by negative 5, that will leave me with 18. And now I'm ready to make my two equations since I've isolated the bars. One of them will be 4b plus 2 equaling an 18. And then 4b plus 2 equaling a negative 18. And now I just have to get b alone. So for the one on the left, I'll subtract 2, which leaves me with 16, and then I'll divide by 4, <coughs> excuse me, which leaves me with 4. On the next one, I'll subtract 2, but this time I'm going to get a negative 20 when I subtract 2, divide by 4, and I get a completely different answer of negative 5. So that's problem 1 and 2. Uh, let's move to an inequality, so I'll just do 5 and 6. So again, in this problem, in these problems, we have an alligator. You will need to run a test. And when we do our I can, I do want to see the work for that test. So isolating the bars, I'm going to be adding the 4, which leaves me with 32. And then I'm going to divide by the 2. And that's going to leave me with 16. At this point, I'll make my two problems. <clears throat> I'm going to switch to an equal sign. Again, the things in the bars, the terms in the bars do not change. It's just the 16 on the outside that changes. So in my first one, I'll subtract 9 and I get 7. And in the other one, I'll subtract 9 and I get negative 25. So I know there's a number line there. Um, uh, I, I'm not going to use that number line. Just Well, I guess I could. So I have something at negative 25 and then 7, which, you know, let's say about here. And if I graph this V, it'll look something like this. And what I want to do is see, is my alligator happier inside the V, so from here to here, or is my alligator happy on the outside, so in this area? So what I want to do is test a point. And what I like to use is my most modified version, which I'm boxing in now. And the best number I think to substitute in there will be x is negative 9, because once I put negative 9 in there, I get 0. And the absolute value of 0 is 0. And now I'm going to see if my alligator is happy. And he is not. He does not like to be <coughs> where I put him. So, where was negative 9? Negative 9 was about right here. And that means he does not like to be in this green area. He'd rather be in the yellow area. So now I'm going to write my answer 
So one, I do have a graph of the solution, okay? Um, but now I want an answer in interval notation and I'll, uh, I don't really have a lot of room. So I'll just move up here. So for this yellow section, I'll have interval notation. And then for this section, I'll also have interval notation. So the arrow on the left for the yellow area means negative infinity. So if I look where my alligator is happy, he's happy from negative infinity until I get to this negative 25. Uh, I will put a bracket around negative 25 because of the underlined here. And then when I get to my second yellow area and I'm moving left to right, the first number, the alligator's happy, is 10 until the arrow, which is an infinity. And I'll just mimic the parentheses. So kind of tying this up, I've solved it. I graphed its solution on a number line, but I really want you guys to realize I am looking for interval notation as well for the answer. So let's do um, number six. So again, I'm going to isolate the bar, so I'm going to subtract the one over. Oops, I forgot my one there. And now I'm going to pause. The reason why I'm going to pause is right now I have a negative number. Whoops, I have a negative number over here, negative 11. So what I need to think about is if I took the absolute value of these bars, just realize everything turns positive. And will that positive number always be greater than or equal to negative 11? And yes, it will. It will always be greater than. Now, it won't be equal to, but that's okay. We don't have to worry about that. So that means this will always happen. So what that means, instead of no solutions, this is all solutions or infinite solutions, if you want to use that. Okay. And there was something similar to that on the very last question on ICANN 3 for the second attempt. All right, uh, I'm not going to do 7 and 8. What I'm going to do now is move to the graphing, and I'll pick problem 9 and problem 10. And we will describe the transformations here. So let's start with this negative. The negative is going to flip it. Uh, this 2, if I take the opposite and I get a positive 2, that means right 2. And this minus 2, which I won't do the opposite, will mean down 2 because I want to involve the negative there. So from there, I need my vertex. My vertex comes from my h and my k. And so my vertex, I'll take the opposite of h, which is 2, and my k, which is negative 2. I'm going to graph those real quick. And then I need my slope. My slope is an inv negative and an invisible 1 hanging out in front. And remember, it flips. So this is my rise over run. So from my vertex, I'm going to go down one and over one to the right and also to the left. And then that one's graphed. So let's do number 11 now. So if you notice, number 11 is missing that piece that's been added or subtracted at the end. So if we want to add something, we can add 0. That doesn't change it. This one half, because it's between 0 and 1, the transformation is a compress. This 3, I will take the opposite, think of it as negative 3, and that means to go left 3. And then I won't go up or down. So if you want to say up 0 or down 0, just to be consistent with everything else, you're more than welcome to. But now I'm ready to graph it, and my vertex is, again, going here. Negative 3 with 0. And then my slope is the 1 half. So I'm going to rise 1, run 2 to the right. And I kind of ran a room on the graph, so I'll just put this much on there. And that is my graphing. All right, that is it for our warm-up. Um, again, save this for Friday, and um, we'll spend a little bit of time on Friday going over this before we do ICANN 3 and 4 third attempt.